In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, may everything we do begin with your inspiration and continue with your saving help. Let the work we do to have its origin in you and through you reach completion. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I should have said St. Matthias, pray for us. Joan, welcome. Um, could you tell us where you're from? You mean what uh, church am I from? Uh -huh. What parish? Uh, shrine of the Immaculate Conception. Oh, another shrine person. Great. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. I was just telling Kate that um, you have a great resource in your parish now, um, Kathy Kutska. So if you haven't met her yet, um, find her. <laughs> She will be invaluable uh, as a resource for you. All right, so um, it, I assume that you all watched the um, the presentation that was given to you to see. Is that correct? That ran about an hour and twenty minutes. Rob saying yes. Joan, did you watch it? You're muted again. Somebody's muting me. I didn't mute, unmute myself. I did. I didn't mute myself. <laughs> okay, and Kate, um, you're also muted. Did you get a chance to watch the um, the video presentation that we prepared ahead of time? All righty. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm sorry. When when was that on? It was that. Uh, I was asking if you had watched the video presentation. Yeah, that was, I I missed. I didn't even know there was a video presentation. I must have missed something. So OK, well, there was a video presentation. Um, I can't remember the exact title, but it had to do with something like 20 questions that keep RCIA directors up at night. OK, oh, sounds good. <laughs> Michelle saying I'm close. Um, so, you know, those were questions that we just as a as a form just kind of assembled because those are the questions that Michelle gets pe uh, peppered with and Charles gets peppered with and the rest of us get peppered with. And um, so we thought those might be helpful, but they certainly are not uh, the end all be all of questions about our CIA. So if you want to spin off any of those that were um, on the presentation, uh, feel free to do that. Or if you have some that perhaps the video raised for you, um, feel free to do that. So whoever wants to toss something out, Charles and Pat and I and Michelle are on the hot seat. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Terry, by the way, the video will be posted so people can still go to the link. Sure. This, this video will be posted as well as the existing one is already posted. And um, if you don't have a microphone or you're having difficulty with it, please put a question in the chat. Um, and if otherwise, if you want to open up your microphone, uh, first come, first serve, or you can you can do the raise your hand thing, and that might be the most effective way. And Benny has posted the video link for us there. Thank you, Benny. So who has a question? Well, I didn't watch the video, so I you know. I, I don't have a catalyst here to add, but I don't have any questions prepared. OK. So Kate, how about you or Rob? Uh, I, I just finished watching it before this. Actually, I missed about the last five minutes of it, but I watched uh, the other, you know, most of it. Uh, most of it's been straightforward with everything that I know we've done in the past. Question is, what's changing or do we need to know about going forward? <laughs> well, the only thing um, that we have right now are the new um, guidelines from the U.S. bishops. And um, they're, to, I read them last night myself, and to me, they're a whole lot shorter and much more terse than the original ones. Um, but I have not seen the the document itself, the, the right itself. We were told not to expect major changes. 
mainly changes in Latin. Uh, I mean, in um, in translation kind of things. Uh, Charles, do you have something you want to add to that or Michelle? Yeah, yeah. Um, Michelle, may I go first if you don't mind? <clears throat> uh, on that, one of the things these are revised rights uh, of the numbering system, 75.1 to 492, whatever. Uh, all that remains the same mm -hmm. with this. So a lot of what you're seeing is some modifications some clarifications. This is not like a major overhaul. You might think of it as kind of an oil change versus 30,000 <laughs> mile check in that regard uh, to it. I, I say that a little tongue in cheek, but a lot of people think this is a whole new game. It's cleaning up some things and amplifications, you know, for it. Now, while we have seen some of these approvals, don't forget this still has to go uh, into publication and it still has to be issued when that exact date for implementation is. Because let's face it, you're going to have to have the book before you implement, you know, with this. So we're hoping maybe the end of this year, beginning of next, um, you know, as, as that goes. I will remind you that uh, there have been a number of resources out there on Team RCIA. I know many of you are very familiar with that. Team RCIA did some webinars. I, I don't remember what's posted now. Some of you may be members of that. But um, they had some webinars and some resources that were posted about some of the changes coming because uh, with the going back and forth between the U.S. and the Vatican, uh, you know, with some modifications here and there and approvals, uh, some of that was public and Team RCIA did go through what was considered some of the changes that were to be approved uh, for that. So you may want to look at that uh, just to get a little clarification. Michelle, did you want to add anything to that? I guess mine is only a little bit of, of uh, being confuzzled as to the fact that the national statutes have been released and we have a uh, date by which the decree will be implemented of 12-1, which is the first Sunday in Advent. But it did not in that document, which I did post the link to here from the USCCB for the national statutes, which will go into effect as again, 12 1 of 24, it did not in their state anywhere about when to expect a actual revised rights book that we would be termed OCIA. So I'm kind of confused myself as to I've 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 asked somebody who happens to have some contacts at USCCB to say, so um, we've got the national statutes. By chance, do you know when we could expect the actual rights book to be released and put into effect? One would think they would be concurrent, but one would be could possibly be wrong. So uh, you know how the church works at its own pace. So when we get an answer for that, or if somebody else happens to see an answer, please uh, let us know because right now I'm just a little confused on that issue myself. And and Michelle, to your point, one thing you will notice is this evolves you know, for it. The national statutes were in the back. And I think a lot of people treated it as like supplemental or appendix type information. In the revised version of this, the national statutes have been kicked to the front. And that's good because you need to kind of understand the national statutes before you dig into the, uh, the tenets of what will be the OCIA. So that's an interesting change that will be coming down too. Uh, one of the other changes that I noticed in the national statutes is um, some flexibility is given to the local bishop. So, um, you know, that's that's going to be something that would maybe take some time for each diocese to make its own um, decisions about how they want to um, do certain things. I mean, it, it's it seemed, if I remember correctly, it had to do with um, the celebration of sacraments for uh, the previously baptized, those that um, are baptized in other Christian denominations, as well as catechumens, and that that when when and how that happens can be left to the discretion of the local bishop. So, you know, that'll be another thing that'll be pending for us uh, as a diocese to see what um, Bishop Hartmeyer and the and the other bishops decide mm -hmm. uh, to do. That's true, because that I think it's norm 17. Uh, I have to go back and look, but it did refer to the fact that a simple right 
for the candidates was it, it made it appear that that was going to be forthcoming within the OCIA rights book. But again, it wasn't completely clear and it's a matter of uh, conjecture. But it does seem like that you are right, Terry, that it will fall to the bishop to decide that. But whether or not that's going to have any outlines as to what that should be in terms of candidates, because I know I would I'm assuming if we polled most of the people here, we would find that. 80 or more percent at least of the people that you deal with really aren't dealt with in the rights book pretty much at all because they're existing Christians who are seeking full communion into the Catholic faith. So the rights book is spends great amount of time for good reason with those that are unbaptized or the catechumen, but it doesn't really address as in depth to the extent for those that are candidates or those seeking full communion from another Christian faith. So, no, and and I don't mean this as being sarcastic or tongue in cheek with it, but if many of you remember Paul Harvey, you know he did radio and TV. <laughs> he would say whatever, and then there'd be an ad, and then it was now the rest of the story. And I think in many respects that's where we are. We know part of the story, but we're waiting for the rest of it to tell us what what to do you know, with this. And it's not a matter of it not being done. It's a matter of what that implementation will be and the framework for that. And we just have to wait. There, There is, you know, a whole section in the right for those that are baptized in another Christian denomination. Um, I, I think it's important. I, I, I'm old enough <laughs> to remember things like, um, you know, a priest would receive uh, a person that was baptized in another denomination kind of quietly in the rectory, you know, uh, <laughs> um, before Vatican II. And so we've come so far in um, ecumenical sensitivity and um, recognizing all baptisms um, with a few exceptions. So uh, the right of Christian initiation made huge leaps forward in the way in, in which we um, deal with or um, I, I can't think of the right word that I want to use right now, but um, with people from other Christian churches and and the, the right that we have now, if you read it carefully, bends over backwards to tell us do not call them catechumens, do not call them converts, um, be ecumenically sensitive, acknowledge and recognize and celebrate the oneness of baptism that we all share. So, um, you know, keep that in mind because that, to me, that's that's the driving force even behind the current right um, is ecumenical sensitivity as a huge importance. Does that, I don't know, Rob, it, we kind of went in several different directions um, with your question, but. Are we as clear as mud, Rob? Oh, yeah. I mean, okay. um, you know, I've, I've, I've been working in our parish probably 20 plus years now. So, you know, I've gone through several directors um, and just being an active team member and uh, one of our uh, Breaking Open Word team members, uh, we're there. And so. We'll do what we need to do. <laughs> do you have anything that in particular that in your particular situation that you have a question on overall on how one is treated or how one is not treated? No, I mean, uh, we've been able to, you know, um, segment out the, you know, the the elect from the, the candidates and, you know, and treat them respectively uh, as they should be. And so um, we're not. We don't have a problem with that, uh, you know, where we kind of meld them together. Uh, you know, we do, you know, we do have, uh, you know, a good understanding that, you know, we do treat, uh, you know, full baptisms, you know, Trinitarian baptisms with respect and that, uh, you know, they're not, you know, they may need the catechesis that, uh, you know, a, a person that have been baptized would need. Or they may have, you know, been coming to mass with their spouse for years and years, and finally decide they want to become Catholic. They're well catechized. They're probably better than some of the people sitting lifelong, you know, cradle Catholics. So, um, you know. 
Yeah, I, I think, you know, as I was um, preparing the, the slides for the portion of the video that I did, um, the right was making a clear distinction between those that are catechized and those that are uncatechized, whether yeah. they're Catholic or not Catholic. And uncatechized, um, it, you know, covers a whole range of things, not just what they know intellectually, but are they familiar with liturgy? Are they uh, people who value community? Are they, are they people who are serving God in the world and and in the parish and in their families and in their community. So there's, I, I remember when I was trained a gazillion years ago. I, I need to dig this out and find it and share it with all of you because it was it was prepared by I think Father Jim Dunning and it listed different kinds of conversion that are needed, like conversion to God for some people, right? Conversion to Jesus Christ. For some people, convert moral conversion for some people that have lived a life um, not in keeping with the gospel um, conversion to community. So there's several different ways to assess a person's. Um, level of. Readiness. And and what kind of catechesis they need. I, I think on the on the video that I, uh, the section that I did, I was talking about uh, uh, <clears throat> particularly Baptists that have no liturgical formation whatsoever. And that's a big change um, for being used to a very stark um, church environment, very simple, very plain, uh, mainly music and homily. Uh, not connected to a liturgical cycle, you know, none of that stuff. So when they come into a Catholic church, it's like talk about culture change. I mean, you got a whole lot more to look at. You got a ritual that is consistent from week to week. I mean, it's just mind blowing. Um, and we had a young man this year who um, <laughs> it was really funny when he called. He wanted to know if he needed to bring a Bible to the sessions with him, um, that the only Bible that he had was a King James. And I said, uh, no, you know, you don't need to worry about that. We'll we'll provide you with a Bible, you know, in time. Um, and then he, he told me that he had read Augustine. He had read Thomas Aquinas Summa. I thought, holy crap, he, you know, <laughs> but it was all head stuff, right? And he had never been to a Catholic liturgy. Never. So, you know, getting to know these people and their and their backstory is just so important. In terms of what what we need to provide, because each each person comes with their own. Their own faith story. Um. Terry, let me interject something. I talked with Michelle about this uh, the other day. Um, as we all know, there are a lot of resources out there uh, on our CIA. Mm -hmm. uh, and many of those resources um, will, will change in due course. But I'm, I'm getting the feel from a number of those that have materials and publishers with this um, that they will probably exhaust those resources that they currently have, you know, with this, because let's face it, if this is issued, it doesn't give too much time to produce a whole bunch of new books. And a lot of what we have out there is still good with this, but a number of the publishers seem to be, well, we will exhaust the resources that we have, but we'll give a supplement talking about some of the changes uh, with that. So I'm just kind of throwing that out there as this whole thing evolves you know, with this, because we haven't had a wholesale makeover uh, like this, you know, before. And I think as a forum, um, as soon as we get the right in hand, we're obviously going to be providing you with um, with whatever we can um, to help you navigate the new right. Um, I, I'm not going to go any further than that, because part of that is money driven. It depends on how much how much the uh, uh, Office of um, 
evangelization and discipleship can spend because there will be some um, some materials. Um, and I just don't know what the cost of those are that we could make available to you, but it, it could be a significant chunk of change. So I did ask for consideration to be put into the budget that will hit July 1. So I have not gotten uh, a, a, any feedback yet as to what was approved and what was not approved budget wise. But I did warn that since this was going to be, a, you know, considered for us a very major change, even if it's we still need to know everything and be able to get that information out to people. Uh, the one resource that I'm thinking of, but I do want them to update it a little bit more if they're going to do it, is Team RCIA has a series that uh, the archdiocese or any archdiocese can subscribe to and then turn that subscription basically over to anybody who wishes to access it. And that will run somewhere under $2,000 for a year's subscription. But unfortunately, they, um, they recorded some of their things a little early, so the, there's many references in some of the videos about, well, we expect this to be out in 2023. Well, it's not going to come out to the earliest of being put into effect till 12-1. So I want to see if they're planning on updating some of those shorter portions of the video, which would be awesome. Um, and then I think it would be a very viable thing. The other thing is I've asked that we could look at having budget to maybe have someone like a team RCIA or maybe someone from liturgical publications or someone like uh, Dr. Jimena de Brock because she's bilingual to come in person and talk to not only the RCIA directors, but their catechists. Um, so that that would be my goal. That would be the what I would hope might happen. But again, we don't have our budgets back yet, so I can't speak to that. And plus, since we don't have the rights book, I want to be able to address everything well at the same time, if at all possible. And mm -hmm. since nothing says anything yet as to when that's going to be released, although we know the national statutes are supposed to be in the front of the book, we just don't know when the book's coming out. Um, mm -hmm. So I would like to be able to do it in one large grouping and attack both the national statutes and any uh, changes in the rights book itself, which are mainly from what we understand so far are going to be uh, corrections in the verbiage. So like if someone is a catechumen by status, but they are in the old, in the current book, a candidate mm -hmm. for the right of election, that's confusing. It's like, but we have candidates. So what they were supposed to, or they've told us they have done, is to clean up those references. So if someone is a catechumen, they are eligible or something to that effect for the right of election. And they're not a candidate because a candidate has been designated as a different entity. So. Also, um, FDLC is, is saying that they're going to be publishing um, videos as well. And Correct. The, I don't know what the price tag is on those either, but but I, I, I hope um, I hope you know that the diocese will do what it can um, and the forum, the lo our local forum, to um, to get you on board as soon as we can. Um, well, one Terry, thing, uh, FDLC, I had spoken with Rita. They had not determined the price yet. Oh, okay. <clears throat> but they said they would post it when that solidifies. Now, one thing that we have been told is <clears throat> for now, we're still going to be calling it RCIA. And <clears throat> but that's going to be one of the first changes that you're going to need to educate your parish about, because when the new book comes out, it's going to be called OCIA, which is the Order of Christian Initiation of Adults. So I I think you should start thinking about um, maybe writing a paragraph or two to put in your bulletin for when that change comes out so that not only um you know your whole parish needs to know what this change is um and why why they changed it from right to order um and the, the simple answer for that as i understand it is that you know when you think of a right you think of one celebration when in reality what you've got here is a gazillion rights right and therefore it falls into the category of an order okay because there's several different rights within it so um 
maybe we can help. Maybe we can write a, a paragraph or two for you, and um, and 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 make that available to you to put in your in your parish bulletins because, um, you know, people's heads are going to be spinning. They finally learned RCIA, <laughs> and now we're going to change it on them. You know, so. <clears throat> and uh, Terry, the word order with this actually brings this more into alignment, you know, like order of penance, order of this or that. Correct. So it's, it's kind of lining everything, it's kind of lining it all up in a, in yep. a much better and more accurate um, pathway. Okay, questions. Oh, hang on. There's a, a note from Kate uh, from the Shrine in the chat. And she says, have you talked to Team RCA about their own name change? Is their membership still going to be the same and worth the investment? Right now it's about uh, $1,000 per parish. And uh, they did say something that a change would be coming with them to, you know, for it, uh, to bring it in sync. But they didn't go into any details, but they did remind people it won't be Team RCIA. Oh, okay. As as we to cost, I haven't heard anything. I'm sorry, Kate. Go ahead. They're not going to change any of their offerings. I mean, their videos and training no, and all is no. probably going to be the same, right? They're just no, changing the, their name. The things that they have, uh, whether it's FDLC or Team RCIA or ACM, any of those, uh, the videos, including forum, which you will find archived on the OEM website, you know, here at the Archdiocese. Uh, those things that are there will remain there for it. Uh, things going forward will have the changes. Do you find oh. the FDLC videos are helpful to like team members? I've just never seen them be like super educational for teams. Do you know what I mean? More like liturgical members of the staff but um the fdlc ones that they did on rcia uh, which was very long series uh has actually been taken down now yeah um, you know it, it ran its course they had it up for a while so it's not available at this time but it wasn't the greatest for team members no it was very academic yes accurate but academic yeah so I posted the the link on the art portion of the Archdiocesan website where you will find our information for RCIA. If you go on the Arch ATL website and click on ministries and follow that down to the right of initiation of adults, that's where you will get to that page. There are some quick references on there um, and then our resources that you click on that. And if the first one up is the Archdiocesan form for the RCIA, click on that and that will bring you to all the archived uh, webinars that the group has already done. Uh, and Kate, by the way, no shame. I watched it last night too. <laughs> but you you were on it to no begin with. So hopefully you knew your own portion, Terry. I know, but I didn't hear the other people. <laughs> but now you did, so. Yeah, I, did. <laughs> I won't take any good. shame. Yep. You know, we're all volunteers. There's a lot of that and and you've got to fit it in as you can. And we do appreciate everything you do. So, OK, so last call for anything, any comments you all want to make or any questions you might have either in the chat or uh, open up, feel free to open up your microphones. Um, I will only say that um, if you have any questions, you can go to the OED website. Uh, with that and also if you watch the video if you haven't watched it and if you have watched it as you get to the end you will also see the initiation ministries at gmail.com uh, email you know there if you have any questions about stuff Darlene is our chair Terry's our former chair with this and if you have any questions on that they can address things too you know for it and be sure and look at the resources on the OED website so as soon as we get information from USCCB on the actual publication and implementation date of the OCIA rights book, we will be the first to let you know. We will blast that out very loudly in an email to everybody. But I would recommend again, if you don't 
uh, if you are a parish catechetical leader in RCIA. Thank you, Benny. He just posted the link again in the chat. So you could take a look at that, click on that, and that will take you right to the existing video. This will be uh, edited and put on in conjunction with that, it may have its own YouTube link, this own portion of it, uh, but that will also be available hopefully by the end of day tomorrow. Okay, questions going once, questions going twice. <laughs> I, I I do appreciate I a, that all y'all, go ahead. I have a quick question, this is Susie. Oh, it's kind of dark, sorry. Um, this might hopefully would have a short answer. I don't want to like, make this this could be opening a can of worms but i'm planning we open RCIA. Cans of worms all the time okay. it's okay susie okay um i'm planning rcia for my second year and the first year was sort of like a diy curriculum and we just had like speakers on you know a lot of important topics um and i was wondering if anybody had like a favorite like this year i'm more open to doing like a curriculum but last year i didn't really have time to really like pick one and go through all the different ones. Um, anybody has like, you know, f any favorite resources they've used or favorite way of just kind of like putting together um, a schedule for the year in terms of catechetical topics? Um, yeah. Michelle, may I add something if you don't mind? Go for it. Okay. Um, I hear what you're saying. There are a bunch of resources out there, and I'm sure those of you there can chime in and say what you're using or don't use or whatever with that. But I think it's always important for us to remember uh, RCIA is not a curriculum, you know, as such. The primary catechetical um, tool is the mass, the liturgy with this and the community as well. Now, all the other resources that we have, and Lord knows there are a ton of them, and they are excellent. Many of them are you know, for that. They make great things to supplement what you're doing, you know, for that. But I think we have to go back to what the rights are with this. Um, the mass, the liturgy, the community are tantamount with this. And another thing that we, we deal with too, Mr. Goja is the final stage, but I think it's this team RCIA uh, has emphasized with this very accurately that Mr. Goja is throughout the entire process, you know, of that. So I may not have completely answered your question, and I hope the rest of you on here, maybe you'll chime in and say what resources you like. Okay, I'm going to make a quick pitch if I can, Susie. Um, I've been helping uh, with the beginning weekend retreat for those coming into RCA at the cathedral, and uh, Bernadette Flowers came up with what, what, what I thought was, a. I wish I could have claimed it, but I, it's her idea through prayer that she did a opening two weekends back to back. One was a full weekend. The other was a partial weekend. But she began these people by using the rescue project as a retreat experience. Now, I'm going to tell you, I helped facilitate it. And because the fact that I was there watching what the Holy Spirit was doing, these people were blown away. But not only were they blown away by the by the information, they took to heart what Father Ricardo was saying in these videos. And then the small group discussions that ensued after that, that they're they're about some of these people that were candidates are about to come in at Pentecost. And they're still talking about Father Ricardo said that we have a mission. God gave us a mission. I need to figure out my mission. That's right now. That's my mission is to find out what God wants me doing with myself as a Catholic or a soon to be Catholic. It she said that the comparing the two groups that she brings in at different times of the year, the ones that she did in the stuff that she's always done. And then the group that she brought in for with rescue as the opening retreat weekend experience. She said it was night and day about these people that came in with rescue, took everything they were doing with a different level of um, intensity and serious, not as in, you know, but they, they knew that this was important. They knew that they were being called by Christ to enter his church. It was a different level of understanding. And then Bernadette fills in the, uh, the blanks uh, 
as she goes along when she knows what these people do, because that goes back to having interviewed these people intensely to talk to them, to find out where their gaps are, what's their walk, what have they understood, what kind of catechesis have they experienced, are they uncatechized completely, do they have a couple of gaps, may they just have a problem with Mary, let's address that, and and as a candidate, you're ready. Uh, there's all sorts of different ways to do it, but I was just unbelievably pleased and excited to see what God did with using this rescue project in existence. It's free on their website. You can download the the leader guides. I'd be glad to help you with that. Um, but it was really intense in such the most beautiful way. And then we got the, the side beauty of the fact that the archbishop was there doing a mass. He was getting, you know, taking off his vestments in another office. I was able to find Father Geraldo and say, hey, does the does ABH have a spare minute? He came out and talked to each, went over to each small group, and there were about eight of them, different small groups, insisted on a group picture. And I'm like, here are people just, this is the first time they've kind of approached the church. And the archbishop, of a major metropolitan uh, church is taking time to talk with them and get to know them a little bit. It was amazing. And I know everyone doesn't have that option of having ABH in the next room, but that was an extra grace that we were given. Um, but just the, 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 um, the atmosphere that it engendered in these people was amazing. So I would ask you to possibly consider using it to some extent. Yeah, and he has a rescue that is. Uh, Rescue has uh, a newsletter type thing that Father Ricardo puts out, which is excellent, you know, as well. And Michelle, I will tell you at the cathedral for the Easter vigil with this, the archbishop, just before we do the conclusion, he does, we, it's almost like a mini homily, but he talks to the people from up by the cathedral. And he says about welcoming, if you need to call on me, you're welcome to do this. He does about 10 minutes of that really heart to heart with the people uh, who are in, who have just entered the church, you know, for that very moving. I'd like or Hartmeyer to Hartmeyer, as the case may be. Yes, that too, <laughs> you know, with it. But it, it shocked us. It actually shocked the deacon last year, too, because the deacon was about ready to say the mass is ended and Archbishop turned and said, not not yet. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> so Michelle, you were talking about doing rescue, the eight week program just on a one a weekend retreat. We we had it as a weekend and then so and I can I can give you we, we played with it because it was the first time we did it, Kate. So as we went through the day, we realized that, well, there's more discussions happening here. So let's let this go a little longer. We'll push that other session into Sunday. Um, so we we did that. We did it with full hospitality. So we had breakfast for the folks. We had lunch for the folks. Um, and then we we ended Sunday that they could in time so they could go to Sunday mass if that's what they chose to do. And then they followed it up the following weekend with like the last one about, you know, now that you're rescued, what is your response? And then right. launched from there into anything that they needed to uh, address catechetically. Um, I, I could speak a little bit about um, the way we developed um, the RCI process at, at St. Thomas Aquinas. Um, like you, um, is your name Susie? It, you're, it comes up as Jacob. Yeah, that's my husband's name on it. Oh, okay. Susie. <laughs> I kind of thought you didn't look like a Jacob. Um, but um, the, when we begin inquiry with people, you know, one of the things we do is ask them, what questions do you have? Because people come loaded with questions. And one question begets another, begets another. Um, and the thing is, it's al they're almost always the same questions. They want to know because they've heard so much, I want to say garbage, maybe that's too strong a word, but they've heard a lot of stuff about what Catholics believe, what they do, uh, you know, that they worship Mary, that they worship statues, what in the world is purgatory that's nowhere in the scripture, what, you know, so the questions tend to be um, pretty similar. Um, and so 
that's our starting point is is honoring those questions with great respect and and telling them that no question is off the table uh no question will insult us um or offend us um just lay it out there for us and and we'll do the best we can so that setting for us is in a circle it's it's a dialogical process during inquiry you ask a question we respond then we say how did that sit with you <laughs> you know how did that you know hit your heart and hit your head you know um are you still struggling with that you know it's it's much more dialogical when you move into the catechumenate your your curriculum is as charles said the sunday readings especially the gospel so what you need in terms of resources are are um good uh commentaries on the sunday readings i love margaret nutting ralph's um breaking open the lectionary it's excellent excellent commentary um there were old books that i don't know if they're still in print but um you could probably find them even if they're out of print called breaking open the word of god um there was another series called seasons of faith and so all of our catechists have all three of those resources um to 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 help them understand uh what the gospel message is about and then in dismissal where it all starts for the catechumenate is what did you hear today you know how did god speak to you um did god speak to you in the readings in the music in the psalm in the homily um in the people around you um you know what did you hear and that's where that starts but the the focus is who is this jesus that's that's the focus of the whole catechumenate period and i would i would add um the period of purification and enlightenment which is just um a much more reflective deeper dive into who is jesus and who am i in relationship to this jesus what is this jesus asking of me um so you know you don't need a curriculum i guess is what i'm trying to say uh you need to read the right and see what it's asking like especially if you go to uh paragraph number 75 that tells you you should be catechizing on the teachings of the church um you should be catechizing on liturgy you should be catechizing on community you should be catechizing on service that they're trying to form missionary disciples that's what the rcia does it's not to um you know to give somebody a, a master's degree in theology it's it's to form disciples and you know when you think about it um up until what 300 years ago people didn't even read <laughs> you know people didn't have books um so so kind of get away from the the book mentality um and focus more on 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 experience on faith sharing on who is jesus your your catechists need to be good witnesses you know uh the people that can share their experience of being catholic of being a disciple um so i don't know if that helps or if that just makes a mess of things but but there is not one curriculum there just isn't that's perfect well so Terry, we draw i mean i have file cabinets you know i'm a file <laughs> cabinet person and and so i've got it you know if you said to me um Tell me more about the Ascension. I've got a whole file on the Ascension. You know what I mean? It's like it's it's just there in bits and pieces and I pull from this and that and the other um, in order to um, to give material to the catechists. So it but it it takes years of gathering that stuff. It just does, you know? It doesn't happen overnight. 
Terry, as uh, I'll share this, Michelle knows this. A couple of you may have heard me say it. I was speaking with an individual at an undamed parish because we want to protect the innocent. <laughs> and the individual um, who was doing the best he could with things indicated to me, well, they took the online RCIA course. Oh, uh-huh. To which I said, what <laughs> online RCIA course? I said, that's not, well, they completed this, so they're ready to come into the church. And I, I had to say, not so fast. You know what that. Um, apparently the materials, and I do know what the person used with that material is not bad, but the, the tone of this was coarse. And again, it goes back to um, making sure we all understand how this process should run. And we strive for, as Jimena de Brock said, gold standard with it. So we keep reaching for that bar, you know, with it. And there are some very good resources out there. But again, like Terry, like you were saying, it's the liturgy, it's the community. Mm-hmm. And we, we do put other things in there to answer people's questions and cover some of the some of the major points, you know, around this. But uh, hopefully none of you are using um, the course. Uh, and one thing I would also say, Susie, that um, that they do at CDK is there's always a talk about uh, the church and sexual ethics or, you know, right to life or. But the beautiful thing that because uh, dig, Dignitatis uh, infin, pronounce it for me, somebody in infi, infinity, infinite, whatever it was, the new one that just came out. Uh, anyhow, it was a great framework for using and it, and approaching the dignity of every human being and then how does the church look at that and why do we look at that so therefore that was a jumping off point into sexual catholic sexual ethics because we are all made in the image of likeness of god then it makes sense that we believe that each life is precious so therefore no abortion we mm-hmm. believe that marriage is between a man and a woman because each has dignity and god had that union for a purpose and so that's how the the um it was approached and there were hard questions asked and there were good answers given uh so there was good uh, because they framed it in such a way that you know you and i both have dignity as does everybody in the room so starting from that is our standpoint that jesus gave us that dignity let's talk about why the church teaches what she teaches in these particular things you know, Michelle, um, when you're talking about the dignity of the human person, what came to mind was um, one one year, I think it was during the inquiry period, um, we had had from that particular group a, a bunch of questions around social justice issues. So we, we did, you know, a session focusing on that. And of course, the very first um, principle of Catholic social teaching is the dignity of the human person. So there was a a woman in there um, who was there as an inquirer. Uh, She'd been baptized in another denomination and she was engaged to a guy who was a sacristan in the parish. um, And he was coming with her to the sessions because he wanted to support her, whatever. Believe it or not, we get to the first principle of Catholic social teaching about the dignity of the human person. And this guy rears back in his chair. Now this is the Catholic, rears back in his chair, folds his arm and says, I think dignity is relative. (laughs) Yeah, it blew my mind. My mouth fell open. I didn't know where to put my face, you know? And it was like, oh my goodness. For five years of study, that's what he came up with? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, um, we have a lot of work to do among our Catholics as well, is my point. <laughs> well, we're about coming up. We're almost at 2.30. So, does anybody else have anything that they want to bring forward or have us to try to answer for you in a future call? or maybe something that the forum should consider doing as a presentation. We are open to ideas 
and I appreciate that. And and Susie, Vince is a really good um, resource. I know Vince, we go back a few years, so that'll be good. So last call for questions. Thanks for the shout out, Michelle. You're welcome, Vince. Always glad to do that. So questions going once. I can once. say some pretty really nice things about you too, so. <laughs> Thanks, Vince. <laughs> Questions going once, going twice. Sold. Okay, Terry, I'm turning it back over to you to wrap us up, please. All right, well, let's close with a prayer. Lord, we thank you for gathering us together this day. Um, as people who love the church, who love you, Lord, and to love your people. Give us the grace, the strength, the courage to be for them who you would be for them. People who walk with, who listen, um, to understand with compassion and with mercy and with love. Bless us in this ministry that we all love. Um, and help us to um, to carry it on uh, in your name. Amen. <laughs>